Hello from San Francisco. Today, your grandma detective shows you the case of Sakura Tree going to all over the world. Let's go out with us now. Grandma, grandma, which one do you like? They're all so pretty. Right, but originally they all came from Himalaya. Really? How do you know? Somebody traced it? Yes, professor of Tokyo Agriculture University did. You see, there was a king of the Nepal kingdom. He gave the gift of a wild-type sakura tree to Japan. Then, that professor was so impressed that he traveled to Nepal many times and found out that certainly those wildflowers that exist in all their flowers are very pretty in dark pink or bright pink and rather smallish. They were the parents of both cherry trees and sakura trees. Oh, by the way, they blossom in the autumn, not in spring. Huh? Seriously? Not like ours? Right, dear. The difference comes from the weather and uh, geographical condition there. Subtropical set up in lower land, very cold in higher altitude, though. Himalayan has many highest mountains in the world, you know that, right? Himalayan is a very far place. How did those wild sakura come all the way to Japan? All those flowering trees usually migrate by seas, carried by birds to nearby lands. The birds come by for fruits or flower nectar and carries the seeds in the tummy. They have bird droppings and that build a sakura road. From Himalayas to Japan, some sakura children went eastwards that way and ended up in Japan where the flowers were totally admired. The route started Himalayan mountainside. It went down to Myanmar, Thailand, Vietnam, southern China, and finally to Japan, with some islands, of course, in between. How long ago did it happen? Oh, nobody knows exactly, but uh, that was like really, really old time, at least like a few million years ago. They know that much because they found the fossil of an old type sakura in Japan. So, then... What happened to the other ones that went to eastward? Oh, you mean cherry load? They become cherry trees. It went from northern India to Persia, Turkey, and those Mediterranean area. Roman Empire was there, right? And they had all kinds of beautiful flowering trees already, so they're not really interested in wild sakura blossoms, which are kind of smallish, right? But they really cherish the cherries. For generations, they selected large, sweet, plump fruit trees. While flowers do not account much, cherries were valued there. But Japanese people eat cherries, aren't they? Oh yes, modern days, but not old days. It, it wasn't tasty. And... Those special fruit trees did not exist in Japan, the ones that were the sweet, big ones. They were brought in from the United States across the Pacific Ocean. Mm, really? Yes. Cherry trees were cultivated in the Osman Empire. Went European countries from there. Um, but a few hundred years ago, about the same time when Japanese found their most favorite kind of sakura. It's a large flower, simple, five petals, very graceful, pale pink flowering trees for flower viewing. Americans found their favorite cherry trees came across the Atlantic Ocean for food consumption. The Japanese want some cherries as well. But then they had to bring it in from the other side of the Pacific Ocean. That is how 
Sakura has gone around the world tour, and Cherry's gone on the world tour and the other way around. You remember we went to New Jersey, the huge, beautiful Cherry Parks, right? So now they are admired in many places. Oh, Sakura goes around the world. Cherries go around the world. Yay! Oh, so why is that that the Japanese people like flowers so much and they do parties and all? Oh, that's、um, another long story to tell about that. So let's go home now. Goodbye.